Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, broadcast. And uh, I'm uh, Jason from QNAP here in Taipei. And today I'm going to bring our latest uh, flagship desktop NAS, which is uh, in, very unique in its own kind. And uh, ever since we first uh, previewed it in uh, CES in Las Vegas earlier this year, we have uh, received uh, many inquiries about it from our partners and also from the media. So today I'm finally going to reveal more information about this TS-H1290FX, the 12-bay all-fresh NAS. So this is a 12-bay all-fresh NAS based on the AMD server-grade processor. And uh, it can support uh, U.2 NVMe PCIe Gen 4, uh, PCIe Gen 3, as well as the SATA SSDs. And uh, it also has a PCIe Gen 4 expansion starts. So the expansibility is actually great on this model. Okay, so let's go into the slides. Uh, you may wonder that uh, how to find a very fast performance storage device to process your high capacity and high resolution media files. So you can see from the example shown on screen that uh, for an hour of the 4K video, it actually takes up to uh, almost a terabyte of storage capacity. For an hour of 8K 24p resolution of the Pro Resolution video, actually almost 3 terabytes. For an hour of 8K uh, by the RAID camera with a RAID code, raw video can take up to 7 terabytes per hour. So it turns that, uh, that uh, the, mega, the bit rate will be almost uh, 600 megabytes per second for the 8K video. Okay, so how can you find such a high performance storage device for your video editing needs? So this is where the, uh, when the NAS comes into play that I'm going to introduce today. Uh, so besides the powerful NAS, how can you find the right SSDs to go with the NAS as your storage media? Actually, in fact, there are many uh, SSD form factors and the interfaces in the market today. For example, based on the 2.5 inch form factor, there's a SATA, which is usually 7 to 9.5 millimeter in height for the SATA SSDs. For SAS SSDs, usually about 15 millimeters height. The characteristics about the SAS SSD is that most of of it is a dual port, so uh, it is being used in data centers for dual controller servers. And then another 2.5 inch SSD will be the NVMe SSD. You may often hear them as called uh, U.2 or U.3 SSDs. A uh, typical height will be 7 and 15 millimeters. Okay. And then uh, the next form factor will be the M.2 SSDs. Uh, likewise, M.2 comes with uh, either SATA or MEME. And then the dimensions can be uh, 20, 30, 20, 44, 20, 80, and uh, 20, uh, 110. Uh, most likely you see in the market will be 2280 and uh, 22110 uh, because the shorter ones. So you, you can see, look at the naming rule. The 22 means the width of the SS, M.2 SSDs. And then the following numbers are the lengths. So uh, the 2030 and 2044 are used in specific uh, areas, applications, such as industrial or in some uh, ultra uh, lightweight uh, notebooks. Uh, for consumers and uh, businesses, they usually adopt the 2280 and the 22110. 110 is uh, mostly used in the data centers and enterprises because uh, the 110 provides uh, additional power loss protection okay, and also higher capacity. And then uh, you have another type of uh, SSD is a uh, PCI car based. So you may have uh, the SSD come in uh, uh, MEME as always, and then because it's PCIe interface, and then uh, different uh, lengths and uh, height. So choosing SSD can be uh, a little of a homework, okay? Because uh, each SSD has a different characteristics, such as the 
random and the sequential read and write performance, the endurance. So it depends on your workload and the, the different forms of workload. You have to select the SAD carefully. Okay. And uh, why the future SAD is the MEME? There are several benefits regarding the MEME SSDs. First, if uh, is the the maximum bandwidth in MEME SSD is a much faster, much bigger. If you look at the pictures here shown, the slowest SSD interface is a SATA, so it's limited by the six gigabit per second. So usually they run at uh, four or five hundred megabyte per second, and then one level up will be the SAS SSDs. Uh, in the past, uh, there's a SAS 6 gigabit per second, and then now typically you see the SAS 12 gigabit per second. But uh, in the next few years, you may see some with the high-end SSD with a SAS 24 gigabit per second. Okay, But uh, the SAS SSDs are become much harder to find because uh, every, everyone, a lot of uh, vendors are moving towards the NVMe SSDs. Okay, so in terms of MSSD, there's a PCI Gen 3 by 4, and a little few of them are Gen 3 by 2. Okay, and then the current mainstream will be moving to the Gen 4 by 4. Okay, so providing up to 64 gigabit per second, so very fast. And why MME is much better than the other two types is the latency, it is super low because uh, the data travel path is very short. If you look at comparison, it's like uh, the MME path has uh, much fewer uh, door guards, like uh, security checks in the middle, in between. So basically, it's almost like uh, directly from CPU to the MME uh, interface directly. And then if you look at the SAS and the SATA interfaces, you see that uh, the data will have to travel between a, a lot of uh, uh, middle mains. So there are some more overheads and more latency and uh, some uh, performance degradation. So that is why uh, if you are looking for the very best performance, then MEME SSD is, is the key to choose. So let's take a look at the, the PCIe standards. PCIe is defined by a PCI Seek community, and now uh, it has uh, defined uh, several different uh, stages. Starting from uh, PCI 1.0, only the 250 megabyte per second uh, back in 2003, and over the years, uh, PCI 2.0, 3.0 has been uh, developed and released, and then uh, PCI 4.0, okay, was defined in 2017 with up to almost 2000 megabyte per second per channel per lane. So uh, it was AMD that first uh, made the PCIe 4.0 into commercial use okay, in your typical world. So AMD brought it in its epic server process in the first generation back in 2018. Okay. And then uh, we started to see the uh, PCI Gen 4 in the mass market and the DIY market is when AMD launched their first uh, Ryzen processor with PCI Gen 4 support back in 2019. Okay, so AMD is actually a pioneer in the high speed uh, PCI interface for the mass market. And QNAP being the member, the one of the 800 plus members in the PCI C we are able to get the latest uh, draft and also the final spec of the PCI design. So when we design our hardware, always make sure that uh, uh, our PCI has the best uh, compatibility and also the performance. Okay. So in the past, uh, QNAP has uh, developed uh, several AMD-based NAS solutions because uh, we started the partnership with AMD from long, long time ago. Okay. So earlier, in the earlier years, we used the AMD embedded processors for the uh, entry and SMB model uh, TS63 and 73 series based on their G series and uh, R series uh, CPUs, it's a SOC. So uh, last year, we launched the newest generation, the 
ES 73A and the 73AU series based on their V1000 series processor. Okay, so QNAP uh, one and a half years ago, we also launched the, our first ever all fresh NAS MEME uh, with the AMD server grade, uh, the Epic 7000 series. The TSH2490FU is a 2U24 bay all fresh U.2 MEME NAS. Okay, so we have uh, received uh, many uh, uh, use cases in, in the all fresh NAS. Uh, with the recommend NAS in from the government uh, enterprises and also data centers. So because of this, uh, we have uh, worked with also uh, because QNAP is a pioneer in the Thunderbolt 3 NAS. So we have uh, worked with many uh, media editing uh, workhouses, uh, film companies, and the television companies, you name it. Okay, so they all feedback to us that uh, they need the uh, uh, a desktop workstation uh, NAS that can be uh, providing high performance 10 GB and even higher for many workstations. Okay, so uh, that made us uh, spend almost a year to develop and uh, to design the brand new, the first ever and um, groundbreaking performance, most powerful desktop, desktop all fresh NAS, the new 12 bay TSH1290FX. Utilizing the highest performance AMD Epic 7002 series processors. So, why the processor is so much powerful? The second generation is based on their ROM, uh, ROM code name family, server grade family processors. So, provide a much better performance over the previous generation. And uh, the NAS has comes with either 8 core or 16 core uh, CPU options. Even though the the processor provides up to very powerful 64 core capability, and the memory is also very powerful. It can support the uh, eight channel and uh, uh, eight DIMMs of the RDIM DDR4 ECC memory slots. The CPU, the most important is that the CPU has a 128 high speed PCIe Gen 4 lens. So which means uh. It is a very good uh, processor for the all fresh hardware design okay, to minimize the latency. There are several uh, application areas that uh, are very good for the all fresh NAS applications from the virtualized environment and uh, for the data center and the databases where the, the applications need a very fast response time. Or if you have a thousand if not the uh, tens of thousands of users who want to concurrently uh, access the NAS. So Offresh NAS is a great uh, storage device to tackle these kind of uh, demanding applications. Another area that uh, we see is the media content creators. So you can see that uh, many uh, film companies, uh, TV stations and the studios they actually uh, use the high performance, not just Thunderbolt, but also the Ethernet, 10 GBE, 25 GBE, uh, even fiber channel to do their video editing workflow. Okay. Let's take a look at the, the more details about the brand new NAS. So the front view uh, is a very soft, simple and uh, elegant. Here you can see that uh, the usual LED indicators, power button, and uh, we also provide the USB port and copy button for you to easily uh, backup or import your media. And then uh, the front uh, 12 bay uh, can support either the U.2 MEME uh, Gen 3 or Gen 4. Okay, U.2 or U.3 MEME SSD can be supported. Or you can also install the SATA SSDs, okay, if you want to have a lower budget, but still provide a good performance. Uh, we also include uh, the LCM monitor so that uh, you can instantly know the status of the NAS and the disks. Okay. The trace can be lockable with our supplied uh, uh, keys so that uh, you can prevent the uh, accidental uh, drive removal. To install an SSD is very simple. 
you simply uh, just uh, take out the tray, uh, use the screw to secure the disks, and then put it back into that. We can so, uh, recognize it. Hotswap is also supported. What if you want a better performance, but uh, your IT budget cannot afford the U.2 MEM SSDs? Or if the U.2 MEM SSDs has a very long lead time in your region for your project, or if you simply cannot source them? Okay, so we see that uh, happen in a couple of uh, countries. So no worry about that. To support uh, 12 of the MEME SSDs, you can uh, have a very good uh, perform high performance solution with M.2 MEME SSDs. So simply put, you can purchase the optional QNAP QDA UMP4. Okay, UDA UMP4. So with that, uh, it can convert. M.2 MEME SSDs, whether it is in Gen 3 or PCI Gen 4, into a U.2 form factor. QNAP also provides the, the thermal pads, and because of the enclosure is made of metal, so it's actually very good uh, to protect the SSDs from overheat. Okay, so if you want a higher performance than a SATA SSD, but I don't want to spend uh, so much uh, uh, cost on the U.2 or U.3 MEM SSDs. You can also uh, choose this uh, QDA UMP solution uh, for M.2 SSDs. Okay. So speaking of this, uh, today we also have invited uh, Micron SSD partner, the director of uh, Micron Solution Architecture in the Asia region, uh, CG Tan, to help us introduce uh, the Micron SSD solutions. So uh, Mani, please uh, show the, uh, we welcome the CG into the session. So CG, can you hear me? So we are doing a live. Yeah, CG is uh, connecting from Singapore in live, right? Yes, yeah, so very glad to be here today to, to yeah. uh, jointly introduce the product to the users and the customers. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sigi. So how about you take over and then help uh, our audience to know more about your micro SAD solution? Sure, thank you very much. And hello, everyone. Uh, as you can see, um, I'm from Micron. I'm very glad to be here to share a little bit more about Micron. Some of you might already know Micron, but, uh, but there are some exciting information that I want to share with you today. So first and foremost, uh, look at the company. So we are a 27 billion global company, the fourth largest semiconductor manufacturer in the world. And we have more than 48,000 pending patents that uh, we have filed for. So in terms of manufacturing locations and uh, R&D, we have 11 and 14 sites respectively. So there's a lot of uh, effort that we do on a global basis to bring the best product to help you solve memory and storage problem. So next is how do we go to market? So if you're familiar with the Micron brand, actually we have two brands, one channel. So what it means is that depending on what you do, you can assess our product from different uh, part of our product portfolio. So for example, you look at the left-hand side, uh, you are a customer who's engaged in server or data center business. Naturally, you will be assessing uh, our range of enterprise memory, uh, enterprise SSD under the Micron brand. So, However, what, if you are into the retail or maybe you are end user, uh, you want to do something for your own or do some upgrade, you can assess easily to our crucial product under the Micron brand. So by doing this, you will be able to get products such as our consumer DRAM and consumer SSD for you to upgrade your home office or even gaming uh, play, gaming PC. So this is how uh, Micron as a company uh, go to market with two brands, one channel. So the next interesting bit I'd like to share is the technology leadership that we have behind the two most important products uh, that we produce. So if you look at the left hand side, uh, it will be the DRAM, right? Everything that you can think of requires memory. And we have introduced the industry most advanced DRAM 
before the one alpha nanometer. So this particular uh, node actually allow us to achieve many, many advantages. So from the first point, you can see is that if your application is low power, maybe a mobile DRAM for handphone, we have a 15% improvement versus the prior generations. So which means greater power saving. And at the same time, we also enable a roadmap for the highest speed uh, DRAM across all the portfolio that we offer. And best and um, best in all is that uh, this product is now in volume production. So if we were to look in on the right hand side, uh, we have the world's first highest density 167 layer NAND. So this NAND actually brings a lot of advantages to all the customers out there that require storage. So first and foremost, I think you know storage increase at a tremendous speed. So you need more space to store. And the good news is that with this new uh, technology, we managed to reduce the cost by one and a half times. So which means that this pass on saving will help you to reduce your cost of deploying products uh, in your various way of uh, using storage. And then the next thing people are concerned about is power consumptions, right? Or other than increasing the, um, the density of our product, we also reduce and improve power efficiency up to 2x. So which means that this new breed of NAND will be able to consume less power, which is a good thing. And what about performance? We all know that writing performance is one of the biggest challenge for NAND. And we have improved this by 2x for this 176 layer NAND. So this all in all brings you 33% higher data transfer rate uh, across your applications. So this is really great news for you, uh, depending on what you use, data centers, NAS, or other applications you can think of. So the next thing I'll just share a little bit about trend. As you can see in this slide, data is growing at a tremendous rate from the analyst research. Every day, there are 25 quintillions of data being created everywhere. So you look at this sheer amount of data, it simply means that every day is XR scale. A lot of data that's created and you need a lot of space to store them. So how, how are you able to store them effectively? So the next uh, portion of the slide will tell you uh, about the market transition. You look at this slide, uh, especially on the bar that's blue, it shows that as early as 2020, in terms of capacity, the industry have moved from SATA or SaaS to MVME. So this is actually a very important trend. The reason is very simple. SATA and SaaS is being a legacy in the connect. It's unable to achieve the kind of performance need that you need. So as a result, uh, MVME, which is natively designed for SSD, obviously it will be something that's most preferred by most customers around the world. So that's the reason why you see a rapid adoption of MVME. And you, as you go from left to right, you see more MVME in terms of density being deployed. This further reiterate the benefit that all users around the world see behind MVME. And that's the reason why today we are here to jointly share about the advantages behind Micron Gen 4 SSD getting into QNAP NAS. So the other aspect of looking at storage in general is that you can store a lot of things in your boxes, but you need to move data around. So that's the reason why uh, we are sharing a quick comparison in terms of data throughput. As you can see, the data throughput over here uh, has increased over uh, time, right? 10 gigabit, 25, and uh, even 100 gigabit is uh, quite, uh, is getting more and more common this day. So the, the thing that, that matters is your underlying uh, storage throughput. So look at the example of a SATA. Per drive, you're probably able to get about half a gigabyte of transfer per drive, right? Yes, you could do NAS, you could do a uh, RAID, but then you need uh, many, many SSD to, to actually saturate your network bus, right? Imagine you go with a 50 gigabit solution, you need more SSD to do that. But however, you start to consider Gen 3 or even Gen 4 SSD, immediately things have changed, right? Like for example, a Gen 3 could easily bring you 3.5 gigabyte of uh, throughput per drive, right? So it can easily saturate your uh, network bandwidth and makes your entire uh, storage uh, array more efficient. So that's the reason why uh, a lot of users are actually migrating uh, to MVME, even on NAS, and more importantly, looking at Gen 4. So 
The next slide will give you uh, some example behind what type of storage solutions uh, uh, that uh, is typically being deployed in SMB or enterprise NAS. So we work very closely with QNAP to make sure all these drives that you see are validated in their system. So let, let me introduce to you from the left-hand side. So the left-hand side features our fastest and highest performance SSD uh, under the NVMe series, we call it the Micron 9000 series. So typically, this range of uh, NVMe drives is used by customers who demand high performance, low latency on critical, mission critical, cloud and data center workload. So it leads in both uh, performance and features and capacity. In terms of sizes, it ranges from 3.2 all the way to 15.36 terabyte. And in the middle, this is where the, uh, the big piece of uh, the market is, the mainstream data centers MEME. We call it the 7000 series. So this particular series is very flexible solutions. It address a lot of wide ranging applications and workload. So it's basically a very mainstream solution that can meet most of your expectation. And it's actually a very good uh, balance between performance, feature and cost. So this reason why we expect a lot of interest and adoption uh, under this uh, category of product. And for capacity wise, uh, we have uh, something from 0 0.4 uh, all the way to 15.36 terabyte. And as you can see at the bottom end, it comes with various form factors. So as we uh, evolve, there's a lot of needs for new form factors. So in this particular uh, introductions, uh, with working with the QNet, we have enabled the M.2 and the uh, U.3 solution into their NAS offering. And then of course, uh, there are uh, future opportunities to look at E1.S, which is a newly introduced uh, form factor uh, under the MVME for enterprise category. And if you look at the right-hand side, uh, this is where a uh, uh, customer who may have a budget or who, who still have some uh, SATA uh, slot they need to uh, connect to, this is a very attractive solution we call it the Micron 5000 series. So this is a, a proven storage solution currently at our third generations. It's actually designed for both new and legacy uh, server or NAS design. It gives performance and features that really exceed uh, what the uh, hard disk is able to do. And we have capacity from 0 0.24 a terabyte all the way to 7.68 terabyte. And it's available in uh, 2.5 inch and M.2 form factor. So these are the solutions that we have brought uh, to the market uh, for the SMB and enterprise mass. So the next thing will be the focus of today's uh, introductions. This is the drive that we debuted along with the trial bay NAS that uh, uh, Jason shared earlier. And then it's based on our mainstream 7400 SSD design. As you can see, this uh, particular product uses our own ESX design, our own memory, our own storage, uh, and then everything is designed in-house by Micron. And of course, it has all the important features that an enterprise uh, user will need, from power loss protections to encryptions, or even to uh, uh, supporting different sector sizes. And then in terms of offering, as you can see on the right-hand side, the focus will be on M.2 and U.3. Uh, you can see it on this uh, cross-reference table. We offer capacity from 960 all the way to 7.68 terabyte. And then something I'll just bring to your attention will be the naming convention. So if you are a typical mainstream uh, enterprise user, you may not need uh, to do a lot of write. You can certainly choose our Pro Edition, which is able to provide an endurance up to one drive per day for five years. And you have an application that does a lot of writing I will recommend you to choose our Max series. So this will ensure that you can have three drive right per day. So this will basically uh, allows your drive to uh, to write all the time without uh, getting into a write per day mode. So this is the various way that uh, you could uh, deploy our SSD in the uh, QNAP offering. And then just very recently, uh, as, as early as this month, we introduced uh, the next version of our 7000 series, the 7450 series into the market. We have uh, refreshed our controller to second generations uh, based on, again, Micron own firmware, Micron DDL4. And now we also have refreshed NAND to 176 layer. So we can bring all this benefit to this new design. 
So it has all the same benefit that you've seen in the previous version. Uh, on top of that, uh, what you see is that we have also introduced some new capacity point. So if, if you need to have more storage density, you now will be able to assess the new capacity point, as you can see, up to 15.36, which is about twice what we could get out of 7400. So as this is a brand new introduction into the market, we are working with QNAP jointly to, uh, to make sure that we will quickly get this drive qualified so that you will be able to consider and deploy in your next uh, project. So what if you are uh, only looking at personal usage or you're looking at uh, Soho applications? We do have uh, under our crucial brand whereby we bring uh, this uh, very uh, cost attractive NVMe and SATA offerings to the mass. So you could consider uh, this uh, range of drive that we feature uh, and it has capacity point as low as uh, 240 gigabyte to 4 terabyte. So this is something that you consider if you're deploying something for personal usage or for Soho applications. So with this, it comes to the end of my sharing in these sessions. And um, at the bottom of my uh, slide, there's actually a QR code. So this is something that uh, if you're interested to find out a little bit more about uh, Micron, you could scan this QR code and then we'll bring you to our commercial website where you can get more information from us. And next, I would just want to bring you back to the stage and uh, hand it back to Jason. Thank you, CJ. So yeah, to pair with the great performance of the QNAP offerage now TSH12.90FX, you be for sure uh, you need to be sure to check uh, look at look at uh, the uh, Micron seventy four hundred series uh, uh, SSD to go with it to bring out the best compatibility and uh, the best performance. So thank you CG for this uh, great introduction of uh, Micron and the uh, crucial uh, SSD products. Thank so, you, Jason. Uh, thank yes, you everyone so we'll see more and today. more uh, marketing events uh, partnerships uh, between QNAP and uh, Micron in the future. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank well. you. Yeah. Thank you, CG. So, uh, QNAP will continue to discuss the talk about the, the great additional features uh, provided by the QNAP NAS. Okay. So, the TSH1290FX uh, provides a powerful data recursion technology to extend the SAT life's endurance. Because uh, earlier we saw that uh, different SSDs have a different uh, life endurance. So uh, when you want to use uh, a more cost-effective uh, SSD models, then the QNAP uh, operations with the additional technology can actually help you to extend the SSD life. So take a look, look at this exam example. So with our real-time data reduction technology, the data before actually being written into the SSD, you will go through the various stages to, for example, compression, deduplication, and even compaction. So that uh, the final data being written to the SAD will be the minimum. So it's, uh, help to extend your SAD life cycle. And uh, because uh, this is an operation now, uh, if you use all 12 SADs, uh, what would happen if you uh, change your application writes the SADs evenly, what if uh, they all die? In the same time, or most of them die at the same time, then your rate will crash, your data will be in danger. So, with the QNAP patented technology, the QCell, the anti wear leveling, leveling technology, you can actually, after the SAT life cycle is 50% or less, then we can help to evenly distribute the uh, write into the SSD, into uh, evenly spread out into other SSDs so that uh, you won't have uh, the same time failure happening from SSDs and it can support the many different types of SSD array types so for your applications. Okay, so there are those are several QNAP SSD advanced technologies that can help you to prolong the SSD life and also to bring out the better performance. So there are also many more from QDS Hero such as over provisioning. Uh, so write collation, this all these can help provide a better performance when you use SSDs on the QNAP NAS. Okay, now let's back to the highway, more highway informa information. Uh, here from on the left hand side, you can see that uh, there are three, P three PCI Gen 4 by 16 slots, plus one of the Gen 4 by 8 for a total of 
uh, four PCI Gen 4 slots, so it is highly expandable. Okay, can support the various QNAP expansion cards. And then uh, for the network speed, there are two of the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. They can also support one gigabit speed. And then two of the 25 gigabit very high speed uh, 25 GPE network to help you bring out the maximum potential of the NAS. And there are also two USB ports on the back uh, for you to connect to a USB disk, USB JBA, or most important, the UPS. So it is very critical to make sure you have the data protection, uh, don't have a data loss when you connect to a UPS to the NAS. Make sure the NAS can safely finish the data uh, process and also the safe shutdown. Okay. The power is uh, provided by an uh, ample 750 watts power supply. So why do we put uh, such a, a big power supply? It's because uh, we want to make sure uh, the NAS has enough power for the, all the SSDs as well as the various expansion cards. For example, if you want to use a graphics card to do some uh, transcoding, HDMI output, or even AI applications, no problem. The power supply can handle it. Uh, in the middle view, it is very easy to upgrade the, the NAS. Later on, I will show you. Uh, but basically, here, besides the same slots that you just saw earlier, they are uh, in the center here, there's a the powerful AMD CPU with either an A core. And the A core will be the 72, uh, 72p A core 16 threads up to 3.2 gigahertz. And then the 16 core version comes with uh, 32 threads and then up to 3.3 gigahertz. So this is AMD server grade processor uh, coupled by the very high quality heatsink and uh, quiet and silent high performance uh, CPU fan to help it cool down. On each side, you have access to four uh, DDR4 ECCRD memory slots for a total of eight. So you can upgrade up to one terabyte of uh, ECCRD memory to make sure uh, your intensive application cannot be running smoothly. Okay, So up to eight channel, one terabyte of RD memory DDR4 can be supported. And QNAP RAM modules, uh, we have a lot of accessories. And then we also have uh, several predefined skills. For example, if you look at the bottom right, the A core version, the 7232P, is uh, shipped with a 64 gigabyte of memory in H channel memory configuration. And then the 16 core CPUs is uh, shipped with a 128 gigabyte. And then the 16 core with a 256 gigabyte memory is uh, by order, by request. So the power supply has an additional power supply cable for your graphics card and QNAP supports uh, various uh, media graphics card and then we are working on to support a more powerful ones so that uh, you can use it for your more demanding uh, tasks. So with QNAP, uh, power, the media graphics card support, you can actually uh, perform, for example, HDMI 4K output to show your uh, virtual machine a screen into your uh, LCD monitor, or you can use it for transcoding, or you can even pass through the graphics card to your virtual machine. Then let the virtual machine not just use the CPU power, but also use the graphics power to do a graphics intensive jobs. Okay, and then you can also use it for your AI training application acceleration. Okay, how about the performance? Uh, as you can see that uh, 2.5 GB and the 25 GB are readily built into the, the NAS already. And then by a single 25 GB port, you can get uh, almost the full speed up to 3000 megabyte per second. And that's not just the read performance, it is also write performance. Okay, so performance is actually very good. Even if you encrypt the volume uh, with the SSDs, you can still, as you can see, not much uh, penalty with the encryption enabled. Okay. Spe speaking of the network speed, uh, 25 GB, not just the 25 GB, it's actually a multiple speed. So by using the right DSC cable and the transceivers, you can actually uh, be more compatible and hook the NAS into your existing 10 GB network or even 1 GB, just make sure you choose the right uh, adapter and QNAP has launched a series of uh, very affordable 
and cost-effective uh, 10 GB QS level switches. So it's a good uh, part, good ecosystem with the QNAP offering NAS. And then recently, we also launched the uh, QNAP's first ever 25 GB high-speed switch. So it's a 16 port. So it's actually, if you want the maximum speed, out of the off fresh NAS, be sure to choose the new QNAP 25GB switch to go with that. Now, speaking of the uh, expand network expandability, actually QNAP has a, a lot of uh, different speed of uh, network interface cards, ranging from the 2.5GB, 5GB, 10GB, all the way to 40GB uh, and 100GB even. Okay, So uh, why do we offer so many different network cards? Because uh, like we see, we saw earlier, uh, the NAS has four network ports, right? So if you want to have a guaranteed, guaranteed uh, maximum connection for your workstations, then you can have a uh, four workstations directly connect to uh, the NAS directly with a uh, LAN cable. Okay. What if uh, you are in your work environment, uh, you have uh, more than ten, or even up to twenty, or twenty the workstations in the same working house? No problem, because uh, the NAS has a uh, four PCI slots. So you can actually install the multiple of the quad port network cards into the NAS, and then you can support as many as uh, up to 20 workstations. Each of them has a dedicated uh, direct cable connection to uh, concurrently editing the video files on the NAS. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, companies they are actually requesting if. Uh, our NAS can support more uh, content creating stations. So this is one of the usage scenario. About the 100 GBE support, here you can see that uh, by supporting the QNAP 100 GBE card based on the Intel E100, E800 IC solution. So this one can have a direct one-to-one uh, -one for the 100 GBE connection. Or you can also use a, a breakout cable cables, for example, the one you see on the right, okay, from one of the 100 GB breakout to uh, four of the 25 GB ports for other clients or switches. So you can use it with our QTS Hero user interface to set up the settings and then to get the maximum flexibility. So this is an example to show you how the multiple workstations can uh, directly or indirectly through a switch connect to the NAS. And then if you are using a MacBook, because uh, Mac, MacBook Pros, they do not have the uh, 10 building Ethernet ports. So you can check out our QNAP uh, QNA T3 10G 1T or 1S. 1T is a uh, 10G Best T, and then 1S is a uh, 10G SAP Plus. So these are these are small adapters that help to convert uh, from the Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 into a 10G BE connection. So with this uh, little adapter, you can easily connect our your, your MacBook Pros into the connect to the NAS through the 10 GB network, and then do a direct uh, video editing or file transfer. Okay. So if your other computers already have a 10 GB SD or even 25 GB, you can also uh, connect to the NAS for multi client multi -collab collaborative uh, cooperation. So QNAP is, is also an official partner of Adobe. So uh, when if you are Adobe user, uh, you are guaranteed that you have the maximum, the best uh, compatibility and also the performance. These are, have been uh, proved, proven already. And then if you are using other uh, applications such as uh, Final Cut Pro X or the DaVinci Resolve, Avid Media Encoder, all these can be supported uh, on the QNAP NAS. So the most importantly, let's take a look at the uh, performance. When you have uh, six workstations concurrently connect to the NAS with a 25 GBE connection. So here, uh, this slide shows you the 30, the 16 core 32 threads, uh, 7302P model with 128 GB memory. It can achieve uh, up to uh, 80, uh, sorry, 816. Uh, Southern IAPS for the iSCSI uh, random uh, read, okay, and for the throughput, the sequential throughput, okay, if you are working with a large media files, okay, so for example, uh, several hundred uh, gigabyte 
profile, then the throughput uh, can be important. As you can see that uh, throughput can achieve the 14,000 megabyte per second in sequential read, and then uh, up to uh, 8,000 uh, megabyte per second in sequential write. And this is based on uh, by using the uh, Micron SSDs to do the uh, performance test. And uh, by using the 8 core version with 64 gigabyte memory, also again, same 6 of the 25 GB ports. Here you can see that uh, uh, IAPS is still uh, quite good, up to almost uh, uh, 400,000 IAPS rendered, the 4K IAPS. And then throughput is on par with the system core version. You can see that uh, if you are uh, throughput oriented, with the, which no matter which school, which skill you choose, can achieve the very good performance, 1,000 and almost five, uh, 50, almost 15,000 megabyte per second. Okay. And we also have encountered some uh, media companies and television companies that actually they are still using fiber channel as their uh, editing or source connection, IP send. So with QNAP, this off-edge NAS, fiber channel send is no problem, can be supported. As you can see here that uh, QNAP has uh, both 32 gigabit and 16 gigabit fiber channel adapters. And then the benefits with fiber channel adapter is that uh, the speed is backward compared with two generations before. So for example, if you are 8 gigabit uh, fiber channel speed, it's actually either car can work, okay? And then uh, when you buy the fiber channel adapter, the transceivers are also included so that uh, you can just use a uh, LC cable to connect them right away. Okay, so fiber channel send IP send is supported. Now, uh, because of the elegant design, QNAP has also just received the latest uh, 2022 the Red Dot Award product design winner. So we are very uh, glad that uh, we the carefully crafted uh, the chassis has actually won the uh, design award, and then. By looking at the previous uh, slides, you may not know how small and compact it is. But actually here, look at the dimension. Uh, the, the width and height and the, the depth is actually very suitable for the NAS to be placed in your uh, office environment. Okay, And then also a lightweight and also can be moved around easily with the SSDs. The air flow is also excellent based on our extensive uh, tests. So you can see that uh, we have actually uh, designed the airflow to be uh, optimal so that uh, all the SSDs, the CPUs, the memories, and PCI slots, PCI cards, and then uh, the, even the power supplies can be properly cooled down and then the heat can be uh, brought out uh, through the rear dual uh, large fans so that uh, your SAC, no matter how hard your work environment is, it can still be maintained at the highest performance level. Okay. So you may wonder, um, I put uh, this uh, device in my office, will it be too noisy? No, actually, it's actually very quiet. Uh, probably, if you look at the, the noise level, when it is standby mode, it's only about 23 decibels. If uh, when it's operation about thirty something, so it's still very quiet uh, than most typical typical office environment. Actually, uh, quieter than your typical fan or AC conditioning. Okay, so it is uh, very suitable for you to uh, put it in your uh, work space and work group area. So let's take a look at the machine and a live demo. Look at the device. Okay. So like I mentioned earlier, to upgrade the memory and the, uh, install a PCI card is very simple. Simply uh, remove the real screws and you can take out the top cover. And then you have access to the four PCI slots here and the memory modules here on each side. Okay, very easy to do the maintenance and the upgrades. And here I have an example of the uh, media graphics card. So uh, we recommend you to install a graphics card in slot four because as you can see here, and in slot 4 here, there are more uh, space on the back. So if you are install a more powerful NVIDIA graphics card, there's enough space on the back for you to install that. Okay. Now, if you want to install the M.2 MEME SSDs, uh, be sure to check out our QDA UMP4. So 
again, very easy to install the uh, M.2 MMA SSDs uh, into here. Sorry. So just install it and use a screw and then to secure it. And then without including the thermal pad, you can put it onto an SSD and then just uh, put back the top cover. Then you can use the M.2 MMA SSDs uh, on on the U.2 slot. So because uh, M.2 SSD, they, it's not a uh, hard swappable. So that uh, by using the QDA UMP4 adapter, you can actually make your M.2 NME SSD become a hard swap U.2 SSD like enclosure. Okay, so that's a benefit, very good uh, use case for the uh, QDA UMP, UMP4. So let's take a look at the performance uh, live demo here. Uh, I have uh, prepared the same uh, NAS with uh, all 12 SSDs. So this is uh, uh, based on the Micron 7400 Pro SSD, 1.92 terabyte per disk. So I have uh, this in the RAID 5, okay? And then uh, besides the dual onboard 25 gigabit main ports, I have also installed uh, two additional dual port 25 GB cards. So Max this NAS has a total of uh, six LAN ports, six LAN ports, 25 GB available. Okay, so I'm going to simulate uh, uh, using uh, five workstations and uh, six client, six 25 GB to concurrent uh, uh, read the data from the NAS. So let's check the, the performance. Okay. So it's going to begin the uh, performance test. Okay, so this is a uh, performance number is almost a uh, uh, fourteen thousand megabyte per second is a uh, down achieved by using uh, six of the twenty five GB then port on the NAS for the aggregated performance. Okay, so uh, like I mentioned before, if you want the high throughput uh, performance, then be sure to choose the all fresh NAS and uh, the MEME SSDs. Okay, thank you. This concludes the live demo. So let's go back to the slides. Okay, so besides the uh, existing hardware and the software features, uh, what are the uh, availability to, how do you expand the cap capacity? Because uh, you may think that uh, all fresh SSD, smaller capacity, but uh, what if uh, after one or two years, you run out of space, how can you upgrade it? Okay. One, Area one method is the, we allow you to replace the SSDs one by one with a bigger SSD capacity. So it's called RAID uh, capacity expansion. Okay. Now another way is to add a uh, external enclosure to expand the capacity. So QNAP has this high performance uh, TL or SATA J bar ranging from four bay, eight bay to sixteen bay. For example, the four bay is a can support a four of these 3.5 inch SATA hard drives. SATA hard drive. You can also install 2.5 inch SATA SSDs, and then eight bay will be eight of the 3.5. Sitting bay is a combination hybrid. So sitting bay, you can see that is 12 of the 3.5 inch plus four of the 2.5 inch. Okay. So this. T and SATA J bar are not your typically E SATA J bar, okay? Because of the typical E SATA J bar are limited by the maximum six gigabit per second. Some are even only three gigabit per second. But with this T and SATA J bar, we use a advanced PCI to SATA interface. So actually, for each cable, it can support up to four lengths, four lengths of the SATA six gigabit. So each cable can support a 24 gigabit per second transfer speed, okay, each cable. So you can, if you buy a, the 16 bay version, you can have a, up to a 64 gigabit per second, okay. So when you buy the TL SATA J bar, all the necessary uh, accessories are included for you. For example, we include the SATA HPA for you to install onto the NAS, and then also the cable for you to connect between the NAS and the, the J bar, okay? And then, uh, as you can see that the, for a 16 bay, four cables are provided and then one SATA HPA is provided for the maximum speed. So if you want the high performance, but not as much as the SAS J bar, then be sure to look at our the desktop version of the TL SATA J bar. 
If you want a more affordable option and an easy plug and play, take a look at our TLD 800C, the USB J bar, 8 bay version. And then we provide a USB C to A cable for you to connect the NAS and then add the storage capacity. So if you want the higher, the maximum available petabyte of storage, then Cunever offers the TLO SAS J bar. So this J bar can actually not just provide the multiple connections. So with previous mentioned the TLO SATA and the USB J bar, maximum two enclosures can be connected to the NAS. But with this uh, TLO SAS J bar, a maximum 16 can be connected to the NAS. So you can easily reach the petabyte of a uh, capacity. Okay. Another benefit about uh, using TLO SAS J bar is that uh, it can actually expand the NAS existing storage pool to expand the capacity. Okay. When you use the other types, then you have to create additional storage pool on the J bar itself. But with such J bar, you can expand it. Okay. And because the NAS itself does not have a SAS port, so you need to purchase the optional QNAP SAS HPA to be installed on the NAS to provide the SAS connectivity. Okay, so we provide a different speed of the SAS HPA for you to choose. If you want to add more M.2 NVMe SSDs, QNAP has these uh, PCI Gen 3 variations. Uh, whether you want to add uh, four of the M.2 NVMe SSDs or two of the NVMe SSDs, okay, all these can be supported uh, with the PCIe slots. If you want the PCI Gen 4, Trivia Gen 4, QNAP has a newly launched uh, QN2, the 2P4, 10G2T, and then 10G1T. The difference is just the uh, one port of 10G or two port of 10G. Uh, so besides the network port, you can also has uh, uh, two of the M.2 PCI Gen 4 new SSDs added to the card and also the NAS by using just one PCI slot. Okay. So let's take a look at the software side. So the OFH NAS has the most advanced QNAP operating system, the QTS Hero, and then also very versatile. Okay, let's take a look at this one by one. So the QTS 5.0 has the latest Linux kernel 5.10 long-term support. So it has the enhanced security and the performance, especially for the AMD processors and also for the MEME performance enhancement. With our QTS Hero, we have an application wizard based. So even if you're not an IT professional, you can easily finish the setup with our uh, wizard and the guide one by one with our friendly user web interface. You can also expand the NAS capability with a lot of uh, applications made for the QNAP NAS. Okay. So uh, product security, data security is a key uh, factor for modern business, especially in the digital transformation. However, because uh, hackers are everywhere and then they have uh, many different uh, ways to find the security holes and uh, attack the businesses. So uh, it is important that uh, for you to always keep the uh, NAS software up to date. So we have uh, many security enhan enhancement features for the administrators to enable and then to protect the uh, NAS data. Now, uh, because uh, business also trans uh, store a lot of data in the NAS, so it is important that uh, there's no silent data corruption. But uh, with the ZFS, it can actually automatically uh, compare and repair the corrupted data. So make sure all your data is consistent. To back up the data and to recover the data in the right time is also vital for continue the businesses. So QNAP provide a license-free uh, different backup methods for customers to choose. So we have uh, the file level HPS hybrid backup single three that you can schedule the backup or manually. And then also have the snapshot can support up to 65,000 copies of snapshot. So it keeps you, you can keep several years of data backup and also can back up to a remote uh, destination. Okay. Also, we have uh, recently launched the uh, SnapSync which is a real-time backup the, of the data for one, one by one mirror. We, let's look at, take a look at it one by one, okay? So with the hybrid backup sync, uh, as you can see from the picture, it can backup the data from the NAS to a external enclosure, 
or from a NAS, one folder to another folder from different locations. Or you can back out to a different NAS, okay, remote area. Now, when you use HBS, it can also support QDuplication, QDDupe, so which means uh, because uh, if you want to back up the data through the internet or intranet, large data can cause your traffic jam. So we can uh, compress and dedupe the data before the transmission so that uh, you can free up the traffic jam in the network transfer. And then when it reaches the destination, NAS, it can uh, automate, it can extract the data back to the original data. Or if you don't want to send the data over the internet, you can also extract it into a small file and then copy to a USB drive and take it to your other offices and then extract it with our various uh, Windows and Mac tools and even Ubuntu tools to extract original data to help you save the time and also the cost of a network transfer. So SnapSync is real time. So as you can see here, it helps you to uh, do a real time remote replication. Uh, so real time snapshot. So make sure uh, when there's a power outage or if there's a data breach of your main server or hardware failure, you can always in real time to have a second NAS functioning and then be ready to be put into your production server site. Another usage with SnapSync is the uh, copy data protection, copy data management. Because uh, uh, when you have the NAS in your production site, the iSCSI line is constantly being used in your production server, being changed, modified, for example. Uh, but you don't want to mess up with the real-time data, right? Because the email, for example, it may corrupt your existing application or some user's data. Then with the SnapSync and Eastern clone, you can actually Real time one 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 to one mirror the the data from the production server to another second QNAP NAS with the same exact data, and then so you can do additional analysis or data operation with the copied line. So this is a very efficient and a very safe data management uh, uh, method that uh, we will recommend you to do this with the two QNAP NAS. So with the NAS, not just the SMB, NFS, this kind of different file transfer protocol, but FTP is also important in businesses. So uh, QNAP has the enhanced version of ATP, FTP server called QFTP. So it can provide a very good uh, log and also permission settings uh, for to provide FTP service to your clients. It can also connect to a remote FTP server to provide uh, FTP data exchange. And VPN is an important way for remote workers, especially in the COVID-19 age. So many people start to work from home, okay? So it is important for them to log on to the company network and access the company server resources and applications through the VPN. So QNAP and QVPN already supports the L2TP and OpenVPN. And now we newly support the WireGuard VPN connection. It's a lightweight, very good performance. And then has all the different client applications that you can install and then connect to the NAS through the WireGuard application, okay? If you are, have a multi-site branch offices, then you can use the QNAP QVPN. It's like a mesh auto VPN, so it helps you to easily set up the SD-WAN like a multi-branch uh, internal network. So you don't have to buy a costly SD-WAN solution. Simply you buy the QNAP NAS and then the router switch you to phone the Q1 solution to help you form your internal company network okay, for remote workers to easily connect. So uh, how can you pick up the virtual machine data? Because the NAS is often used uh, in the virtualized environment uh, for VMware, Hyper-V, or even Citrix. So with our license-free hybrid data protector application, actually you can easily pick up the VMware and the Hyper-V virtual machines into the NAS and then do a snapshot version recovery in no time. And then uh, QNAP in the future, this later this year, we will also, uh, not just for the virtual machines, actually you can pick up your entire uh, company computers workstation. So all the Windows servers can be, and Windows 10 can be, Windows 8 can be supported, uh, pick up the, image into the NAS for easy data backup, okay, for disaster recovery. If you are working with uh, the S3, the cloud providers, QNAP actually has uh, many different uh, tools to help you 
better and efficiently utilize your cloud uh, services because uh, you know you don't want to uh, pay a monthly fee and then just have a, a large chunk of uh, the storage spaces on being unused because sometimes it come maybe included in your plan already. So with the QNAP Q object, it helps you uh, to similar NAS as an S3 object storage server. So actually you can test and deploy your programs onto the NAS and then test it before you officially deploy into your S3 cloud. So it helps you to uh, save the different uh, bandwidth and also by doing it locally, also the performance is at least two or three times much faster than doing it on the cloud directly. Okay. So if you have many cloud storage spaces, you can use uh, several ways to connect to them and utilize the space. The simple one is uh, using our fast and to mount them as a network drive. So NAS or CM as a, a additional folder uh, from the start cloud storage provider. And we currently already support the uh, 20 or more cloud storage provider is adding more uh, yearly, okay? Now, another way is a file cloud gateway. So it is more like a block base so that uh, uh, when you hook up to your cloud storage, then we can actually use the space for our QNA applications. So it's just like a, a local storage space. So you can have a more advanced features to be supported, okay? Or we can further share the space through our other network protocols through SMB and FS or FTP, for example. So another way to utilize the cloud space is a visual bar cloud. So it's also a block base for you to mount a cloud uh, space so that uh, you can uh, use, for example, provide the iSCSI target line or use uh, some SMB, the file service to your local users with the visual bar cloud to have a better utilization of the, and also cache the service to help you to reduce the minimum waiting time. If you are working with the SaaS, the software as a service providers such as the Microsoft uh, 365 or the Google Workspace, then you may wonder how can I have an efficient and uh, affordable way to back up the date user data? Okay, QNAP NAS with a bug safe application, you can easily back up all the different data stored on these two providers, whether uh, it's an email, uh, calendar, contacts or even the uh, files. File can be, you know, Google Drive, OneDrive, even the SharePoint can be backed up with our box set to the NAS directly, okay? So let's, uh, uh, let's just some of the applications that you can work with the cloud services. Now, uh, speaking, speaking of virtualization, because the CPU has a uh, eight core, 16 thread, and then 16 core, 32 thread, so, the NAS is a very good uh, candidate for running multiple virtual machines, if not 10 or more, okay? With QNAP virtualization, you can easily run multiple Windows, uh, Linux, Ubuntu, or even Android, and also the QNAP QTS Cloud, the virtualized operating system on the NAS. With our QBPC, uh, so if you install a graphics card, you can output the VM through HDMI with a USB keyboard and the monitor, you can do it like a, a little PC and then operate it on your own in front of you, okay? With container apps, there are more than tens of thousands of uh, containers that uh, you can directly download and then run your apps and it's also portable, so you can move them around between the different uh, NAS devices, okay? So QTS Cloud will, will be providing it to the uh, QTS Hero NAS, and then so with that, uh, you can uh, easily deploy multiple QNAP uh, services without uh, buying additional hardware. So this can make it truly flexible for you to, for example, segment segment the different user storage spaces or to provide different services to have the uh, best uh, QoS. Okay. Uh, again, for the virtualization station, then the NAS platform can provide support SRLV means that uh, if you install a LAN card, so most 10 GB and 25 GB and higher one uh, can support, if it's a SA Plus or SAP 28, can support the advanced SMANIC feature that can support SRLV. So you can actually offload the CPU usage and then be all the network process will, packets will go through the network, ne network card directly so that uh, it can help increase the 20% virtual machine network performance. Okay. 
So greatly, you can uh, greatly in, reduces the CPU load, and then you can allow the CPU to process other applications. Multimedia is also a great feature uh, for this kind of uh, usage. Uh, the NAS can support HDMI output by installing the graphics card, also transcoding with our various applications. You can also use our Cinema 28 to have a multi-room streaming to demo your design content or your signage video to your different uh, rooms or different displays. And then if you are working with a streaming server, various streaming servers can be installed, such as Plex can be installed on the NAS to have the best and entertainment uh, streaming choice okay if you want to do some ai for example the facial recognition then our nas can also support the coral tpu with coral tpu uh QNAP application has been certified by google officially so you can purchase these tpus uh, locally in your area so we support the usb interface and the mw pci interface so usb seems to be put, put in uh, into and plug into any usb port on the nas and then uh, M.2 PCI can be supported through the QN2 PCI adapter or the QDA UMP4 adapter. The NAS can support up to four, so the performance can be greatly enhanced. What can you do with the TPU? What kind of acceleration? First one is our QMAG. So when you use QMAG to have a facial recognition, it can help you through the AI recognition. So speed can be speed up with the TPU acceleration. And then if you are using surveillance, then you can also use this for the face recognition together with our QVR Elite uh, software. So can help you to better recognize the different faces and then uh, perform a series of the uh, applications. For example, you have a, a smart AI face recognition. You have the uh, identify a safe zone, for example, with the different profiles with the edge TPU acceleration. Because uh, IP cameras have become more affordable, then, so many users start to uh, deploy their own surveillance system. So with NAS, you can easily do that. With our QVR Elite, it is a subscription-based uh, surveillance service. So you don't have to be uh, forced to buy so many channels on the NAS or um, to pay more when you have a smaller area. You can simply uh, choose uh, based on your location the area size you can add more channels one by one or in the future so with our qbr ed provides a real-time surveillance monitoring and playback and also we have a various ai assisted features to help you uh, better to track and then to find out diagnosis your uh, surveillance footage so even though the nas is uh, pretty shipped with a qts hero you can still uh, during the setup you can still choose to install qts for the less memory intensive applications and then also for other uh, features on the QTS. Or another way is if you want to migrate from your other NAS that's only QTS, you can also migrate with the QTS here. Okay. And because this is a flagship NAS, so we provide a standard five year warranty that includes a free technical support. So unlike other video editing storage, they only provide three year standard warranty. And then three years technical support, you need to pay a lot more to get up to five years. We include this for free for five years storage. So the NAS actually provides a, uh, a lot of advanced features, including the AMD Epic server grade processor, and then 25 GB and 2.5 GB support built in. And then PCI Gen 4, PCI Gen 4 U.2 MMM SSDs, and also the four of the Gen 4 slots. And then, uh, Capacity can be greatly expanded with the QNAP various uh, JBAR enclosures. And then you can also run various virtual machines and containers because of the uh, uh, very powerful CPU with 8 core and 16 core. Okay, so again, these are different older skills that you can take a look about that. So this is actually the best NAS we want to bring out the flagship for the designers and the media studios. So if you are working with uh, the AK 4K media editing, or simply you want the best performance and then the quiet for your uh, servers in your work studios for your uh, office environment, be sure to take a look at the upcoming TS H1290X, the all fresh 12 bay MME and the SATA SSD NAS.
So thank you for the watching the session today, and be sure to check out our press releases and also uh, subscribe to our news to know more about the upcoming new products and the new features. Thank you. Bye bye.